We have had a little bit of a tragedy here yesterday. Hi guys, I'm back. I'm Casey at this old greenhouse homestead here in East Tennessee and it is kind of a chilly day today. We've been in the 40s and it is about two o'clock. So it's probably not gonna get much warmer. I think we're about 48. I don't think it's supposed to rain, just cloudy, which it kind of does that a lot here in the winter. So I'd like to see a little bit more sun, but that's okay. I wanna kind of give you guys an update of the greenhouse. I've been growing some seedlings in here and they are getting so big and I've got a lot of stuff blooming. And oh, look at this, look at my little baby sun rose. It's a little succulent and it hasn't bloomed in a long time, which I'm not sure why, but it's pretty happy in here right now. It opens up throughout the day and then evening it closes back up and then tomorrow morning open back up again. And I've got a lot of succulents blooming right now. Um, just a lot of these echeverias, they're so pretty. There's one over here. Okay, so I want to show you guys the update of my seedlings, and it's been a couple weeks. I actually um, planted these before the snow, so it's been coming up on close to about three weeks. So these are my San Marzanos, and they look, they just look amazing. Look at that. Super healthy. And they're doing good right now, so I'm going to leave them under the lamps. It's giving that additional daylight right now because we are right at the end of january the days are starting to get longer now which is good so as soon as these get tall enough and big enough i'm going to move them over here in this part of the greenhouse because they'll just love it over here it'll be hot and they'll get lots of sunlight so they'll be really happy usually when they get to the top of these lamps that's when i start moving them over now i've got a lot of petunias growing in here and they're looking healthy i've got some beefsteak tomatoes i've got more beefsteak up here and they look really healthy um, more petunias. My celery actually come up, so I'm pretty excited about that. I've got broccoli, and it looks good. It's getting some of its true leaves in. And then I have some more beefsteak in here. And then yesterday I just planted some impatiens. So this year I've got to work on my flower beds in the front yard. We did all the railing on our porch over last summer, and then we changed up um, the rock and everything at the bottom of our house. I'm going to kind of get some nice pots and put a lot of colorful annuals in those and just do some stuff working up there as well as this flower garden and getting the spring gardens ready down the hill and working with the chickens so, so we've got a lot of stuff coming up and i'm just getting in preparation for it right now and speaking of chickens i'm fixing to go down the hill and check on the chickens i've got a bunch of broody cochins and they're putting a lot of eggs underneath each other and one of the issues is, is whenever one goes in, another one goes in to lay an egg, one of the mamas will steal it. So I've got eggs underneath them that have all kinds of different gestations. And what I'm going to do to remedy that is I'm going to go and mark the eggs I want to keep with a Sharpie. And that way when they lay new eggs, I can go in there and retrieve the ones that don't have the mark on them. And that way we can get them all hatched on the same date. So I'm fixing to go do that. Before I go, I'll let you guys gander at the pretty plants because it is winter. It feels nice and cheery to be able to look at the plants growing like they would in the summer. So here's my bougainvillea, which is producing a lot of pretty color. And then I've got new blooms on my lemon trees. Got some bromeliads. My pretty palm trees looking happy. Arbor Cola. Seth got me that for Mother's Day and it looks like it might be gonna bloom. Never seen it bloom but, but I've got several little buds up here so it must be pretty happy. I have no idea what the bloom is gonna look like so that's kind of exciting. My little Crisula. I got a bloom on that. I just kind of have to go in here and just search for little things because you'll just be surprised at what you can find. And then that little bloom from my Christmas Carol. That pretty color on that succulent. This one is still blooming to bloom for a long time and everything in here needs a good drink so i'm going to give them a drink and then we'll head down to the chicken coop
Hey chickens. I can't believe before too long, a couple months, we'll be getting the garden prepared. I'm going to get some really nice garden fabric and go through my rows. I think there's a place about 30 minutes from here that has a bunch of rolls. You can get different sizes. I think I'm gonna get like a six foot width to go between the tomatoes and the rest of my rows, I'm gonna do like a four foot. So hopefully a lot less weeding. And I'm gonna let my girls out for a few minutes while I'm over here. They'll go back in. I did yesterday. They'll come out here and pick, but I'm really wanting to get a fence. I keep saying that, but I've been waiting till our post office and mail delivery services kind of get things back in order. They've been really, really messed up here. Really, really backed up and then they're just short as it is. So hopefully they can get things caught up from this storm and then I may try to order something. Let's check out the chicken coop situation. Oh my, what in the world? Broody Central, okay, that girl has three. Oh, we've got a co-parenting going on over here. Hmm, I wonder if there's still somebody under here. I don't wanna hear somebody. Mercy, yeah, she's the same one that had all the eggs, and I have no idea how many eggs she has under her. My goodness, ladies, how many eggs do y'all have? Good grief. Well, this is going to be a situation, so I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. I'm going to have to have a little setup in here for water and feed just for the baby chicks, but I'm assuming eventually the mama will take them down into the run. Oh gosh, oh mercy. Your little eggs are probably gonna be hatching soon. Three? Where did the rest of them go? There was like 11 eggs under you. Oh my goodness, I bet they've stole them. Have y'all stole the eggs? Come on. They're probably not gonna be too happy. Oh, they have, they have, I think. Oh my, holy cow. You're stealing her eggs. <laughs> this should be interesting for sure. Yeah. Look at her. Look, she's stealing them too. Look at that. Okay, well this is just going to be a big co-parenting situation here. Well, it's out of control at this point, so I'm just going to let it be for now. I should have come down here and started marking eggs. I guess what I'm going to do now is mark the ones that are in here. And then anything from this point on that's not marked is going to be pulled out of here. <laughs> okay, so I've marked everybody's egg and they're very ticked off about that. I had to put a couple of them out here because they were not too happy with me messing with their eggs. But I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh my goodness. Look at them. Listen to them. They're hacked off. Well, at least I've got some sort of system going now. Okay. Hey ladies, y'all gonna have to go back. And be go on. Go on. Go back. There you go. Go on. Go on. Go. Go. Go on, buddy. I think what I'm going to attempt to do is get some of this hummingbird vine cleaned off of my trellis over here. It is something I'm wanting to get off here. I want to get these beds filled up with compost and more soil in preparation for the spring. So I don't know how hard this is going to be to get this off. It was very hard last year because I didn't wait till it browned over and died. I did it while it was green and it made it very difficult. But another issue that I foresee happening is all of these seeds are left on this plant right here. And every time you move them, all of the seeds come off. And I really don't want this vine all over this yard. So I don't know what it's gonna do. I really don't know. I may end up just covering this completely with soil so I can start fresh and maybe plant something different here this year. Maybe some roses or something that's not, I won't say invasive, but I love the hummingbird vine. It's really pretty, but I don't want it to start infiltrating everywhere else. All right, wish me luck, guys.
I'm wanting to make a dahlia bed. Some of the dahlias with the big heads, the doubles, or some of those are like the size of dinner plates. They are so awesome. But I thought maybe one of these beds would be really beautiful for those. Okay guys, I'm back and I got a mask because there is all kinds of dusty stuff from this. I guess seeds or whatever that is flying everywhere off this stuff and I'm just breathing it in by the gazillion so that's why I have a mask on now. And by the way, anybody want to come over and help? Stuff. I'm getting somewhere. I'm seeing progress. The Coreopsis roots. I came up here and I was like, I could hear water splashing. And I was like, what is it splashing from? And then I saw it in there and I thought, how, how is this happening? Well, okay. And we had the hose turned off during the snow and everything, but we had it shut off. I guess there was water in it and it busted. It's lovely to have one degree temperatures. That entire shark bites messed up. Back at the shop. I had to take a breather. Well, still working on this massive entertainment center, as you can see. Entertainment center number two. Is it going to be black as well? Oh, no. Staying. Had to build a little jig here. Set my legs in because I've got to make these grooves. Because what this is goes here like this. And another one goes here. And then there's a panel. The uh, oak, solid oak panel goes in here. Stuff right here takes a little time. You gotta be pretty precise with it, as you can see. And we've been a little behind because of the weather. Good afternoon. It's been kind of chaotic here at the This Old Greenhouse Homestead. Y'all. I've been out cleaning my chicken coop down the hill moving stuff to the compost pile come up walked up the hill to get something turned around literally two minutes I heard my chicken screaming come down the hill and the neighbor's dog that I was talking to you guys about oh, on a couple of vlogs back maybe in December was in my chicken coop and he killed one of my chickens just for fun and then had another one in his mouth running out with it i come screaming he dropped it and now it's hiding up underneath um, my mother-in-law's under their deck so i don't know if she's injured a lot of feathers are gone so we're gonna have to see if we can find her get her to come out she's terrified right now we have had a little bit of a tragedy here yesterday started recording this yesterday and thought that it might not be a good idea that i put it in here because i was very upset and you know how you can get overly upset about something and then you give it some time and you cool off and well, that's kind of where I'm at. So I'll tell you guys what happened and show you guys a little bit of the aftermath of it all. My vent fan's on. It's pretty warm today. The sun is out, which is a blessing. So um, anyways, I'll just cut the, to the chase and tell you guys what happened. So yesterday I was down cleaning my chicken coop and I was taking a lot of the bedding out. It had gotten wet from all the snow and ice that dripped in. So I was getting all that wet, mucky stuff out of there and taking it over to our compost pile. While I was doing that, I was letting my four big hens free range. They don't go far. I've been letting them do that in the last week and they'll go into the garden about 10 feet and then they'll go back in the coop. Really, they don't stay out long because they're so used to being in the chicken coop. So they'll go out for about five minutes and go back in and then they'll go back out and in. So I was down there and that's what they were doing. And 
part of this is my fault, but not all of it, but it's just no point in casting stones at this point. But I came up to the house real quick and thought, well, I'll just leave the door open for a second because I've been letting them out while I've been watching them and stuff like that, and they've been fine. So I came up to the house to get something really quick and grab a drink, and I was literally gone no more than two minutes. Well, as I was coming out the front door, I heard the chickens screaming, and it was like one of the hollering noises that they make that is when something's walking by that's a threat to them. So I took off running and came around the corner and saw something white laying out from the chicken coop, and I was like, oh no. I instantly, my heart just kind of fell out of my chest, and I was like, that wasn't there before. What is that? And so I take off running, and it was the leghorn, and the neighbor's dog that had recently, if y'all saw in one of my videos, the septic tank videos, um, we had a lady come up the road, and the neighbor's dog had gotten into her chicken coop and gotten her chickens. It was like the second time it had done that and tore into the coop and was got her chickens. So this is the same dog came into my yard and it was in my chicken coop. My chickens were in the coop, all four of the girls, and I had the divider in there so the other ones couldn't get out because I, I just don't usually let the little babies come out, the little cochins. And he was in my coop. He had taken the leghorn out and just killed her for sport, for fun, and come right back in and got Betty, my bard rock, and as I turned the corner down there on the coop, he, the dog was standing there. So I screamed at him and he dropped, he dropped Betty. And she just laid there and it was a distance from me. And I thought she's died and along with the other one. And I called my husband and I was just all out of sorts, just, oh. and so he got here and 30 minutes had passed and I walked down there and we went to check everything and Betty was gone. So I'll walk down there and, and talk and show you guys kind of where this occurred. When I was looking down here, the leghorn, you can see a pile of feathers. She was laying right there. The dog had to have been watching. He had to have been watching it happen so fast. I mean, I was walking up the hill. He had to have already come running in here. He come in my chicken coop and you can see all of her feathers, which is so sad. So sad. They're everywhere and I've got to get them cleaned up. I just, last night was a lot. And so he came out here and he looks like he probably ran over here with her. There's a pile of feathers over here. And he took her over here and just dropped her right there. And then that's when I was standing here and I saw him standing right there with the barred rock in his mouth. So I yelled at him, I screamed at him. When he dropped her right here, ran up the hill to go to the house to get something and so after several minutes of going to do something in the house, my husband had pulled up and I said, let's, let's go down there and I'm gonna show him what happened. And I come and cross this corner right here and she was gone, she wasn't here. And I was like, what? I've been watching out the window for him. I knew he hadn't come back here. Look at this. It's like, how could she have survived this? And when I turned this corner, she was right there and she was standing up. She was walking very slowly with a lot less feathers, obviously. And so she crawled up underneath here, way up under there. I couldn't get her. And she was so stunned and so scared she wouldn't come out. So I know how chickens do when, when something like this occurs. Years ago, we've had a dog problem and we used to free range chickens and they would get so scared after something like that would happen and they wouldn't come out, I mean, sometimes days. So. I said, let's let her rest for just a little bit. And about an hour and a half later, me and Eli come down here and she had moved a little bit closer away from up underneath there. And I called her name and she come out to me. So put her in the chicken coop last night. I'm coming down here to check her again. We'll put some medicine on her back and hopefully she's gonna pull through. I don't know. Um, she did, she's lucky. If it, I know if it had been another second or two, she would be, she wouldn't have made it. After all that, <clears throat> the thing that aggravates me the most, and I was aggravated yesterday, I was sad and aggravated at the same time. Obviously it's an animal and you know, that's what some animals do. But he was in my yard and he went inside of my chicken coop. Yes, I had the chicken coop opened and you know, that made this vulnerable in here because it was open. Any animal could run in here, but, but 
I just think, you know, people that have animals, they need to be more responsible because I normally keep my chickens put up and if I let them out from this point on, they will be inside of a protective fence. The only other predator at that point that I could run into would be a hawk and I have free range chickens for years and the occasional hawk will come down, but the most trouble I've ever had from any animal is usually a dog coming in the yard. They, they do the most damage because usually a hawk, the roosters will warn them and they'll get them inside the chicken coop. And you know, sometimes if a hawk comes down, they'll get, they'll come after one chicken, but not just literally go through all your chickens in like five minutes. So anyways, it is aggravating. I'm just going to let it go from this point on and, you know, me staying angry or saying something ugly to the neighbors is probably not going to solve the problem. So I've cooled down. It's been a day and um, I'm just going to make sure on my end I have things secure for things that occur like this. So um, I am still looking into the electric netting if I do decide to let them out into the yard. Um, and he's obviously going to try to do something about the dog, but this could happen with another dog coming in the yard. Hopefully the dog won't be back. Now, if the dog comes back in the yard and is jumping on the coop and doing things like that, obviously we'll probably do something about it. She's a lucky bird. All right, Betty, let's check you out. Hey, Betty. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. And you can see where he got her and most of the the feathers on her tail are gone so that's basically kind of where he he got her out because her feathers don't look bad anywhere else and she doesn't have any wounds on her legs which is really good so she's just she's a very lucky bird and i'm gonna clean all these feathers out let's get you all some scratch i know y'all like that let's see but let's see if betty eats it and check the broody hens how many eggs do you have you have three and they're all marked all right, so, oh goodness. What about you two? Oh my, you all have probably quite a few. Oh, let's see what you got. Come on. Not gonna let me, are you? What have you all got going on? Everybody's broody. Come on, come on, come on. Two eggs, now this one. Oh, oh that one's marked too, okay. What have you got? What have you got? You've got one. Okay, so I think we've got like two over here. Okay. Mercy. The situation is about the same as it was the other day. No extra coaching eggs just because they're all sitting now, so none of them are laying. And I guess we'll just have a whole bunch of chickens running around with a bunch of mamas. <laughs> hey, chicky chicks. Here, chick, 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 chick. Well, she's eating, so that's a good sign. I think she's going to bounce back. I think she's going to be okay. She's a, she's a tough old bird. She's a tough old bird. Look at her. Alright, that's a good sign.